Hey everyone, welcome to Pink Tutu Tarot. So today we're going to take a look at a situation in your life and what you're not seeing. What is it you don't realize? What is it you aren't understanding or aren't literally seeing about a situation? So I've got three readings for you. These cards are in the readings. For group one, your card is the Ten of Cups. And I'll hold that there so you can get a good look at the picture, hopefully. Ten of Cups. For group two, your card is the Queen of Wands. And for group three, your card is the Hermit. All right, so all you have to do now is go down into the description box, click on the timestamp for the reading you wanna watch, and it will take you straight there. Hopefully you'll learn very quickly whether that's your reading or not, whether it resonates with you or not. If it doesn't, jump into another reading. Or, like I always say, if you're drawn to a reading, even if all of it doesn't resonate, there's usually a message there that you're meant to hear anyway. So stick it out if you can. Uh, even if all of it doesn't resonate, you can leave those things for someone else. But Pay attention to the messages that do kind of tug at you. Because um, there's something there you need to hear. Okay. All right, we'll see you in the reading, y'all. Hey, group one. All right, so this reading, we are looking at a situation in your life. You can decide what the situation is, although we'll get into it a little bit, and you'll know if you're in the right reading, I'm sure, pretty soon. But looking at specifically what it is you're not seeing about this situation. What are you not aware of or or not recognizing, okay? So your initial card is the 10 of cups. Give me just a sec, I just wanna see what messages come through on this. They're telling me this is about a partnership. This is about a partnership, a love relationship of some kind. Let me just get a little more information so, if you know, so you know if you're in the right place. Hold on, please. <laughs> They're telling me this is about a challenge you are facing uh, within your relationship with this other person. It's a difficulty or an obstacle that you feel is in the way of your partnership. It's not about, um, or at least it's not specifically about a fight or um, a difference of opinion between you, because I do feel you're very uh, connected, very pair bonded, uh, very much on the same page in a lot of things. There's something else, something external or something else that is sort of either causing delays in your connection, causing challenges, getting in the way of you. Um, you're saying getting in the way of you finding the perfect balance with each other. So you'll have to decide what that means. You know, you'll recognize it if this is for you. But there's something that's kind of making it a little bit more difficult in your relationship than you would like it to be. Okay? But there's something in here that you're not quite seeing, and we're going to dig into what that is. Okay? So let's leave that card there, and let's get some new cards down and see what we can find out. First card is the Seven of Wands reversed. And they're telling me you only have eyes for each other. You only have eyes for each other. So if there's any doubt in your mind that your person um, has a wandering eye, I'm, I'm not getting that at all. They're, they're actually giving me the words, you only have eyes for each other. You want to be together. You want to share your lives together. So what's getting in the way? What's, what is it that you're not seeing about this? I feel like you know what's getting in the way, but maybe you don't understand the why behind it, the higher reason. We have the Three of Pentacles.
I do feel in some way this has something to do with your jobs. Maybe your job, maybe their job. That may not be for all of you, but um, that is a message that's coming through as I'm putting that last card down. We have the Queen of Wands. And one more. And the Queen of Cups. Okay, they're bringing in two queens. They've brought in two queens. Gender aside, they are still telling me, they're giving me this overarching message, I think to ease your mind, that that there isn't another person. There may be in theory, meaning there may be a past person that um, that either you worry about or that, I don't know, their energy is still kind of hovering in the air, if that makes sense. But they're not an actual reality in this person's life. They're not wishing to be with them. And, and I feel the same would be for you, uh, but, but they're really kind of showing this to me about your person they're telling me you are you are very very well suited to each other um perfectly suited in many ways and and your person does not have a wandering eye so if that is a concern at all don't let it be don't let it be not that you know i don't want to get too off course and um you know veer into that kind of question because that's not what we're asking here but they are wanting me to address it. So um, some of you, at least, are probably having that concern. So hopefully that eases your mind a little bit. Okay. All right. Let me get see if I can get any other initial messages from these cards, and then we'll talk through it one at a time and see what it is you're not seeing about the situation. Okay. Again, they're talking about an obstacle or, an, or a challenge, possibly challenges, that you need to overcome as a person, meaning you, but also as a pair, meaning the two of you. There are some challenges you need to face up to in some way and not be afraid of. Okay? Let's see what else they have to say. They're telling me you are aware of what this is. So don't worry that there's a challenge that's going to show up tomorrow. It's something you're already aware of that already has you wondering if you can be happy, if there can be a happily ever after, in essence, for the two of you. Not that there is ever such a thing, you know, but uh, in essence, what's on your mind, this is what I'm getting, so take this as it resonates, if it resonates, is that you're wondering how you're going to overcome this obstacle and, and create a life together. Okay? They're saying you will face these obstacles. They're saying right now, you're, it's almost like you're trying to dodge this obstacle, whatever it is. You're trying to either pretend like it's not fair, like it's not real, or one of you is. Or you're trying to figure it out logically, make sense of it logically, and to find a way to overcome the obstacle. But because there's something here that you aren't aware of, there's something you don't know, you're saying you're going to keep um, kind of banging up against a brick wall here and until it's ready to be resolved. So it's not in your imagination that there's something there that is preventing, you know, the complete union for the two of you. Maybe you live separately, or maybe you live in separate places, areas, countries, cities. Maybe you, um, you want to get together, but there's, you know, there's something in the way. 
there's something in the way. And I'm even struggling to get the words out, which is an indicator that, it, again, it feels like a blockage that you don't quite know how to overcome. And it's this feeling of either ignoring it or trying to force your way through it. And neither of those things are ideal and neither of them are likely to work. <laughs> there is another way they're telling me. But, there, but it's like you have to know the full story. So let's get into that. Let's get into the cards and see what that story is. All right, your initial card is the Seven of Wands reversed. One second while I listen, y'all. Again, they're talking about trying to force a solution before it's time, before it's time. And okay, they're wanting me to turn this card around and just reference it this way. You know, this person is on the hill and they're knocking back all these other wands that are, are trying to trip him up, essentially. You know, he's, he's fighting them back. He's, he's doing what he can to um, push the enemy away, in essence. The enemy, in your case, being whatever obstacle is in the way. It doesn't feel quite so ominous as an enemy, but there is an obstacle in the way, and there's an energy of here of forcing your way, like forcing these things to back down in some way. So there's something you're trying to manage yourself and or just completely ignore. And maybe one of you is doing one thing and the other is doing the other thing. That's entirely possible. But they're saying there is a third way. There is another way. And initially what they're saying is start off by pausing and allowing these obstructions, allowing these challenges to your partnership to die down a little bit to die down a little bit. There's, okay. There, I, <laughs> sorry, I, I'm trying to say something and, and they're kind of stopping me from saying it just yet. So bear with me. I just want to understand what I can say. <laughs> what did you? Okay. We, okay, we are going to get to it, y'all. Sorry, I don't mean to leave you hanging like that. We are going to get to it. But what they're basically hinting at is there's something else going on here. And you may be aware of it on the periphery and not really understanding that it's a, it plays a bigger part in the solution than you realize. Okay. Okay, I'll leave it at that for now. Don't worry, I'm going to get more into it a little bit more in a bit. All right. So your next card is the Three of Pentacles. And again, they're bringing up, up the word work. An actual work. Not working on your relationship, not working on your partnership, not working on overcoming the obstacles, but your actual job, your work, what you do for a living. Um, you or them or the two of you. Uh, let me just hear a little bit more about what they want to say about this. There is this need right now to focus on your work, on your job. At the moment, it needs to take precedence over your relationship in some way. And it feels as though part of the obstacle has to do with one of your jobs um, or your work. Or it could just be that one of you is more focused on the relationship where the other one is more focused on work. It feels like work has Kind of an underlying current of challenge here and the advice they're giving here with this is to focus on your work right now not to the exclusion of your person but do allow it to take some priority because it's important that you get your work situation and again this may be theirs so if that doesn't resonate for you it might be their job There's, it's important to get your work situation sorted so that when things do come together that becomes less of a worry you know 
you, you've got that under control. You've got it managed. It's stable. It's constant. Uh, there, there are no real concerns job-wise. Because it does feel like one or both of you is in a little bit of a rocky or slightly imbalanced place with your work. Or you're striving, you're wanting to get ahead in work. But there is a bit of imbalance here on, do I focus more on work or do I focus on my person? And uh, for some of you, I do feel that this involves a potential move that could interrupt your career progress at the moment. And you may not be aware of that, or you may not be thinking about it. You would be aware of what's going on with your job and their job, but you may not be thinking of that being a reason why the two of you kind of are not meant to be 100% paired, 100%, can they give me weird words, 100% combined at the moment. I know that's a weird word for a relationship, but, I, but whenever I try to say something else, they're giving me these words and wanting me to say that. So figure out what it is, y'all. But you may not be thinking of your work as being a challenge here, when it comes to why you can or cannot sort out the situation with your person. But what spirit is giving me is that this uh, pullback you're getting from the universe, something that is sort of keeping you from being fully together, is in part related to your job or their job. And there is a need to get to a more stable, get onto a more stable ground to get to a place of expertise, of uh, advancement, of leadership, of, of higher income, so that when you are together, and whatever challenges come up, you know, when two people really do come together, you know, when you move in together or whatever that may be, um, you're not also worrying about your job, your work, how you're gonna make money. They're saying if you gain enough expertise now, the work piece of your relationship will be easily managed, easily sorted out down the road. Then that becomes a very small problem or a very small obstacle. For example, um, in case you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> um, for example, for those of you who are living in different cities, and you're wanting to be closer to each other, possibly move in with each other. If you were to pick up and move right now, it would, could cause a major disruption in your career progression. However, if you can stick it out, build up your business or your career to a higher level, and that doesn't mean forever and ever, it just means focus on your work right now and get it to a place where it's more abundant, more stable, and you feel more confident about it, then when the doors open and you're able to move closer to each other, it, it will work out more easily for you. It's like you'll, you'll either be able to be transferred or you can move your business or you'll be able to get another job on the same level more easily. And I know that's not the exact situation you all are in, but there is this message here for all of you that there is this need to focus on your work, get it to the highest possible level that you can for now, and then um, work on the relationship a little bit more. You know, work on moving in together, work on being closer together. Uh, work on leveling up your relationship. Again, it's not to say you can only focus on one or the other at a time, because obviously that's not true. You know, we all know how to balance our lives, at least to some extent. But um, Spirit is just saying it will be much easier for you to focus on your relationship later and, and whatever needs come up then if you're not also worried about your job and your work, okay? Take that as you do. Okay. So the next card is the Queen of Wands. One second. 
they're telling me this represents your this represents your energy um, and the need to build up your confidence in some way. They're saying you have a lot to offer in your relationship, but you're not believing it. You're not accepting it. You're not allowing that confidence to shine from you. You may still be talking down about yourself. You may talk down about yourself to your partner, to your person. You may have doubts about your work and the job you do. You may have, you, you know, you may have struggle with self-esteem issues. Spirit saying we want you to build up your self-esteem, build up your self-confidence so that it doesn't become an overriding habit in your relationship to keep tearing yourself down. There is this need to get over that before you two are together all the time, if that makes sense. Because it can quickly become who you are in, in essence. Um, and I'm saying that in air quotes, who you are. You know, we, we end up taking on habits and these habits become more and more regular and they start to become a part of us. And so we become that person who's always tearing your own self down, right? Or complaining about this or whatever, you know, we all have bad habits. But in particular, this is about your self-esteem, your confidence, your own personal empowerment. There is this need for you to build that up so that you can share it with your person. It will help them as well. And more importantly, so that when you are together all the time, you are more in the habit of standing in your own power and your own confidence in general, not meaning standing up to them, but standing in your own power in general, respecting yourself rather than tearing yourself down. Because that will eat away at you and your spirit. It really will. So there is this also there is also this need for you to work on yourself a little bit more. Okay. As well as focusing on your work. Now when we get to this last card, this is the one they wanted me to hold hold on to before we talked about it. So it makes sense why it's the last card. The Queen of Cups are telling me is another person. It is a person in your partner's life or your life. It is not another potential suitor, if that makes sense. It's not a love interest. It's not a, um, you know, someone who's flirting with your partner or anything like that. This is someone in their life or in your life that doesn't approve in some way. Doesn't approve of the two of you being together. They're saying for the most part, this will... This should resonate with all of you. If it doesn't, you know, take the other messages and uh, and just know that this is an important message for others who are watching. It doesn't mean the rest of the message isn't for you. You know that these other things aren't for you, but for the most part, those of you watching, whether you are aware of it or not, there is someone in your life or their life. If it's in your life, you do know about it. If it's in their life, you may or may not. But there is someone who doesn't approve. And this is someone important either to you or to them. And while I'm just going to pose this as this is a person in your partner's life, but understand that it may be in your life as well. But while your person may be saying, it doesn't matter to me if they don't approve. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to be happy. I want to be with you. You're what matters, blah, 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 which are, is a wonderful attitude to have uh, when it comes to that kind of situation. But the reality is it does matter to them. It does affect them. They obviously still want to be with you very much. They're very much in love with you. I am getting that. And they only have eyes for you. But this person in their life could be a family member, a friend, um, someone important, or again, in your life. But this person is in some way 
keeping them from taking steps forward that would allow the two of you to come together more easily. That would make it more comfortable for the two of you. Um, it would make it easier. It would just make it easier. I, I'm trying to, to allow them to give me a different phrase for that, but they're giving me the same phrase. It would make it easier in some way. Just listening to see if there's anything else they want to say about that. Again, this is someone important to them or to you, someone whose opinion they do value and do respect. It may be someone they love. It could be a family member, you know, that they really love and care for and cherish. And while they may say, you know, I hate that they don't approve, but I'm moving forward with my life anyway. You know, they may be saying all the right things, but the truth is in the back of their mind, there is a little bit of sadness there. There is a little bit of, I can only take things so far because I don't want to destroy this other person. I don't want to hurt this other person. I don't want them to fall out of my life completely. And to me, for those of you where this is actually, and I, and I feel it's a very tiny, tiny percentage of you where this is not the case. For those of you where it is the case, this is the biggest obstacle the biggest thing that you are not aware of that is preventing your partnership from going all the way in some sense. These other things, you know, your, your confidence, um, not forcing things, you know, focusing on your work for the moment, these are all important. And they should resonate with you. They should make sense to you in some way. This last one is kind of the secret the secret sauce that has to be sorted in its own way and in its own time and it can't be forced it can't be rushed it can't be pushed it can't be manipulated just it has to happen in, in its own time you can't force someone to change their mind and as much as your person may be saying you know what i'm going to do what i want anyway in, in, the, in the quietest parts of their heart, they're struggling with that. Or again, this may be you. Spirit is saying you will find a resolution. You will find a resolution. You will find that the doors open for you down the road at the right time. Work on these other things that you do have some control on. You don't have any control on this one but it's an important piece. And that's the one you have to just step back and allow it to resolve on its own, okay? All right, group one, I hope that helps. I hope it resonated. I hope it gave you some insight into what you need to know. If it did resonate, I hope you'll give the video a thumbs up. It really helps me know that our energies are connecting and that I'm doing these readings for, um, for an audience that needs it. <laughs> Um, and that it's going somewhere. Uh, it will also help future readings resonate with you more. And I have found that to be true. Of course, it also gets the channel out so that more people can find the readings and messages that they need to hear as well. Um, lots of reasons. All it takes from you is, you know, simple gesture. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs down if you want. <laughs> but uh, just interact with my channel. It helps me know you're there. Uh, I appreciate you so much and have a great day, y'all. Bye-bye. Hey, group two. All right, today's reading, we're looking at what you're missing about a situation in your life, something you're not aware of. So let's start with your initial card. Your card is the Queen of Wands. Give me just a sec. I just want to connect with this card and see what initial messages we have for you. So hold on one second. We're talking about the Queen of Wands is someone who is meant to burst onto the scene, who is meant to shine very brightly, who is meant to make a difference in the world in some way. And they're giving me that this Queen of Wands 
is you. Regardless of gender, this Queen of Wands is you. You're, you're meant to, in some way, and this is, I, I don't like using this word, but you're meant to be in some way very, very powerful. Um, not in a negative or aggressive or egotistical way, but it's like you're, you're meant to stand in your own power and you are meant in some way to make a difference in the world with your work, with who you are, with something that you do. But you're shying away from it. You're shying away from it and you know this. You might not know exactly what your potential is, which is why Spirit's coming in to remind you. But you may be wondering, why is it taking so long for something to take off? Why am I not getting ahead faster? Why am I not going further with my dreams, my goals? Why am I not making more of a difference in the world if that's you know actually something you are focused on? Why isn't it happening? That's the question they're giving me in my head. Why isn't it happening for me, for you? Why isn't it happening yet? And that's the question they want to answer for you today in some way. Okay. So hopefully that resonates with you. If it doesn't, try one of the other readings. Um, or listen in because you might be surprised. You know, maybe you're selling yourself short. Maybe you don't think you're powerful. Maybe you don't think you're meant to make a difference in the world. But maybe, maybe you need to keep being reminded that you you are. So. All right, let's get some more cards down and see what else you need to know that you're not seeing about this situation. Okay, your first card is the hangman in reverse. Then we have the Nine of Wands reversed. We have the Hermit. And one more. And we have the Queen of Cups. Okay. All right. Give me just a sec. I just want to listen for some initial messages for you from Spirit. And then we'll go card by card and talk about what's going on here. Okay. So give me just a sec while I listen, y'all. So tell me right now that in some way your self esteem is a bit low. You're not quite loving yourself uh, as much as your spirit team would like you to. They would like you to see, hold on, there's something going by making a loud noise. They would like you to see yourself from their eyes, to treat yourself kind of the way they treat you. And you may not be aware of your spirit team or, or how they treat you, but, um, you know, uh, take that um, as you can. There is this need to love yourself a little bit more. <clears throat> Not because they're, they're saying there is, there's nothing wrong with you. They're saying you're just, you're just feeling a bit low lately. They're saying you've been arguing with yourself, <laughs> which is a funny way to put it. You've been arguing with yourself, giving yourself a hard time, berating yourself, coming down on yourself. Maybe not all the time, maybe not 24-7, but more often than, than you should. Because they're giving me that you're really, really quite fantastic. You are this powerful, powerful queen of wands on the inside. If you could just see it and tap into it, you would be unstoppable. 
I don't know if you can see the pose on this um, card, but she is very, very powerful, very powerful. And they're showing me that so are you in your own way. You're incredibly powerful. You have so much potential for this lifetime. You have so much love to give. So much you have to offer, so many ways that you can help others and in some way make the world a better place. But you can't quite get there when you're always telling yourself you're not good enough. So that's a big message for you to just consider. Consider. It's not the only message. Okay, we're going to get into the cards and see what else they have to tell you. But that is one takeaway they would like you to at least sit with and try to make a conscious effort to build yourself up rather than belittle yourself. Okay. All right, so let's jump into the cards. See what else I can tell you. All right, your first card we have is the Hanged Man Reverse. Let me just listen for a sec. They're telling me there is this need for you to be more active in your world, meaning whatever it is that you've been trying to do that you haven't been um, quite succeeding at. You know, success is a tricky word because everyone's version of success is different. But your opinion is you haven't been succeeding enough. You haven't been getting as far as you want to. Um, you haven't been progressing fast enough, whatever that means for you. They're telling you that there is a need for you to be more active in your role here. <clears throat> and one second. They're saying there's a need for you to put your thoughts into action. So, you know, there was a time, and, and, and you're still sort of there, but there was a time when you were the hanged man, right? When you were allowing yourself the time and space to be still, uh, at least within your mind, and to allow yourself to dream big, to dream of a different reality for yourself. It may have been a time when you were coming up with a lot of ideas, and maybe you still are coming up with a lot of ideas on how to make your dream a reality. But they're giving me that you haven't really put enough of them into action. There is a need for you to make some progress, meaning a need for you to do some of the things that you have been telling yourself you want to do, and you do have control over that. I don't mean the goals you want to reach, but the steps it takes to work toward your goals. They're saying you need to take a few more steps. It's time now to get off off of the tree, right? Release yourself from that place of dreaming, of mentally manifesting, of brainstorming, and start doing, start doing, okay? I'm not saying you're lazy, y'all. <laughs> Please remember I'm just the messenger, number one. Number two, they're not saying you're lazy either. They're saying there's a little bit of fear there. There's a little bit of reluctance. And some of it has to do with some insecurities you have. And it goes back to what they were saying before about not believing in yourself enough. But one of the best ways of getting to a place where you believe in yourself and you see your value and you see your worth, start doing the things that you've been telling yourself you want to do. Start taking some action. And you'll start to see progress from those actions. You'll start to see yourself as someone who is creating something new, is creating a level of success for yourself, is creating momentum towards your goals. Because it's not going to just land in your lap. It has to, it has to build up from your own actions and your own beliefs. And I am getting that you do believe you can do what you want to do and get where you want to go. There is this underlying belief 
It's just not an affection. Okay. So take that for whatever it means. Maybe there's even just one thing that you've been telling yourself you're going to do. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. It's not the right time. Maybe later. And this came up in another another reading as well. I can't remember which one. But, you know, that happens. Sometimes these messages have to come back so that you hear it again. You know, if you are hearing it again, uh, just as a reminder, you know, it's time to take action. All right. Your next card is the Nine of Wands reversed. Okay. <laughs> They're telling me that when you put yourself out there, when you when you take steps toward your goal, your dream, it has you feeling a bit naked. <laughs> That's why I was giggling. Sorry, y'all. Because uh, um, I'm just a kid, really, at the bottom of all this. Uh, <laughs> um, it has you feeling a bit naked and vulnerable. And what they're saying is, not that that's a wrong way to feel because it is kind of a naked vulnerable feeling when you put yourself out there when you are doing something new you know when you're or taking steps to achieve a goal that um up until now has just been a wish a dream you know you haven't seen the reality of it in its fullest form because you've been holding back on some of the activities that will get you there so there's insecurities, there's some fear there. It's natural. So they're, say, they're saying it's not that you need to not feel naked, not feel vulnerable. Feel it. Allow it. It's real. But go with it. You know, find a way to be okay with that. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what other people think of you. It's so much more important what you think of yourself. So if you're putting yourself out there and you're trying and you're doing your best and you're doing new things, whether you're brilliant at them or not, yet you're doing what you can to manifest a reality that you are imagining and dreaming of. You're doing what you need to do. And if there's anybody out there who doesn't like it, eh, they've got their own stuff to worry about. They've got their own stuff to work on. Don't worry about them. Focus on you. If it feels vulnerable, accept that it is a vulnerable thing you're doing, that it is a bit scary, that it is a bit uncomfortable. But it won't kill you. <laughs> it will help you get where you need to go. And I'm not saying, you know, do something crazy. I'm saying take some of the steps that you've already told yourself you need to take get to your dream, to achieve what you want to achieve, to become this powerful queen of wands. Do some of those things, even if you've been resisting them because you're afraid of what people will say. You're afraid you might mess up. Let yourself mess up. It's okay. That's life. You're never going to learn without a little bit of messing up without a few mistakes. But you also never get to the fullest reality of your dreams if you keep sitting on the fence and you don't try. Okay? All right. So your next card is the Hermit. Let me see what they want to say about this. <clears throat> They tell me that you, you feel like you have more to learn. And you do. We all do, right? We should never stop learning. But you don't need more knowledge, more classes, more degrees, more whatever, to start taking steps in the direction you want to go. You know, obviously, if you want to be a surgeon, you do have to finish all of your schooling and <laughs> your residency. You, you, have to t you have to get all of that knowledge in place. But aside from required uh, degrees and certificates, 
there's a part of you is is holding back because you feel like you don't have the experience, you don't have the knowledge, you haven't done enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> what they just gave me is that you feel like you haven't done enough to deserve the success you want. You haven't earned it yet. And somewhere in your mind, you feel like in order to earn it, you have to learn more. It's going to take a lot more time. You're going to have to take your time and learn more and practice more. Or whatever it may be. Study more. I'm saying what it really is going to take is for you to take the knowledge you have the experience you have, the expertise you do have, and just start moving towards your goal. Start doing the things. You'll get the experience you need along the way. Whatever pieces are missing from your knowledge base, again, aside from required classes, certificates, you know what I mean. It's the actual real life experience that you feel like you haven't quite acquired yet. That comes with doing, with taking steps, with moving forward. A little bit at a time. You're saying do one thing today to get you closer to your goal. Even if that thing is scary and makes you feel naked. Allow yourself to do it. Put yourself out there. Give yourself the chance to fail and learn from it and grow from it. It's not really failing. You're just figuring out how to not do something. And you're not going to know until you try. So don't wait for the experience to sort of land in your lap. Don't wait until you feel like you've got all of the experience and all of the knowledge you need in order to step out and be who you're meant to be. You have to start stepping out first and the knowledge will come. The experience will come from doing, from practicing, from going about the business of achieving your goals. And they're telling me you're really really struggling to understand that right now. So take that if it resonates, but that's what they're giving you. That you want to believe you're going to have all the answers and all the knowledge and all the experience you need, and then at some future point in time, you'll be ready to make your dreams happen. Okay, what can you do now? Because they're telling you you need to start taking some action now. Doesn't mean you have to jump in both feet into the deep end. But you have to start doing some of the things you said you were going to do. So you can start getting closer. And the closer you get, the more confident you're going to feel, the more powerful you're going to feel, the more empowered you're going to feel. The more that Queen of Wands within you is going to start shining out. And there's no stopping you once you get there. All right, your final card is the Queen of Cups. Give me just a sec. One, one sec, no. They're telling you that there's this need to be aware. There's, you ha you ha there's feelings that you have about someone in your world or in your life, maybe one person, maybe more than one, maybe a woman, maybe not be, but it is someone that in some way you do care about that is influencing your fear. Maybe directly, might be indirectly. Maybe it's somebody in your life that you care about who is doing something similar. And maybe you feel like you're a lot better at it than you. You know, just as an example. And so it makes you feel less than. But you're not. You're in a different place on your journey, that's all. It may be someone who disapproves of what you're doing. It may be someone who believes in you so much 
that you're afraid to fail and disappoint them. So think about that. There's somebody in your life that is directly or indirectly, and I feel for most of you it is somewhat indirectly, influencing your fear, your fear of failure, your fear of success, your fear of putting yourself out there. You need to release that. It's not that you need to release them from your life, because this is someone you care about in some way. But you need to release how you feel about them in this situation. Whether they approve of you, disapprove of you, are better than you, worse than you, are whatever. Whatever it may be. Let it go. You have to try to let it go. Because they're not really a party to your life, to your success. Doesn't mean they're not in your life. Clearly they are in some way. And it doesn't mean they shouldn't be, because you care about them. It means you need to not let them influence you. Have you changing your mind about what you're willing to do and not willing to do? Have you feeling overly vulnerable to the point where you're afraid to take a step? Afraid to put yourself out there, afraid to move forward, afraid to trust in the experience and the knowledge that you have. Don't let this one person or people have that much power over you and your life and the trajectory that you have, the potential that you have for reaching your goals. You're too powerful for that. Your light is me meant to shine so much brighter than that. And whether they mean ill intent or they don't, they might not even be aware that they're influencing you or affecting you. Because it's you that's letting them influence you. Even if they're outwardly telling you they approve or don't approve or whatever it may be, you're still allowing them to affect you in some way. And that puts them in a place of power over you and your life. And it's time for you to take your own power back. Be the boss of your own life. Be the instigator of your own life and your own creations and your own goals. That's what you're meant to do. You've got all this power, all this light within you. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. All right, group two, I hope that helps. I hope it gave you some insight, gave you some new information that you hadn't been thinking of previously or maybe thinking of in the same way. Um, if the reading resonated, of course, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. Drop me a comment, subscribe, whatever you feel called to do. I really appreciate it. It helps me know that the reading is resonating with you and that our energies are connecting. It will also help future readings resonate for you a little bit better each time because our energies will get closer and closer connected, especially in this kind of general reading. All right. So thank you so much, y'all. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye. Hey, group three. All right, today we're taking a look at a situation in your life and what it is you're not seeing. What is it you know you don't know, you're not aware of, you're not recognizing about this situation. Okay, so your initial card is the Hermit. And I'm going to get some initial messages off of this card for you that will hopefully help you understand if this is your reading or not, first of all. And then we'll get some more cards down. So bear with me one sec. I just want to listen to what Spirit has to say. Okay, the first thing they're saying is that the hermit is someone who is very experienced in some way. They know how to walk through life with a degree of certainty. And that's a, an odd thing to say, I know. They're telling you that you are the hermit. Um, and the way you live your life, you do have a... a a good sense of self about you. You understand yourself. You're very self-aware. You understand your place in the world in some way. You respect your dreams, your goals. You don't let anybody talk you out of it. It's like you quietly move through life with a knowing 
that you're on the right path most of the time anyway. Right? But there is something that you cannot see. And they're telling me this is bugging you. <laughs> so I don't know what that thing is. Let's see, hold on one second. They're telling me that there is um, there's this question in your mind, even though you you are and you do feel like someone who is very proactive about your life. You're very determined, very focused. In a lot of ways, you know what you want. And you kind of know where you're headed, but there's this feeling inside of you that you want to know how it's all going to work out. Like, how is it going to end? How is it going to look when I get where I know I'm going? This could, you know, have something to do with your work. This could have something to do with your family life, you know, your personal life how you live your life in some way, you're on a path and you know this, you are on a path. For some of you, it may be a spiritual path, but not for all of you. So don't worry if that's not you, but you are on a path and you, and you know this, you have this knowing that you're going in the right direction, even if it isn't all fully manifested yet. But there's this, <laughs> There's this voice in your head that is, you know, telling yourself that you really just want to know how it's going to play out. How's it going to go? What's it going to look like? Because you're trusting in the direction, but part of you wants to know, yeah, but am I going to like it when I get there? Whatever it is you're working towards, whatever it is you are aiming your life at, if that makes sense. There's this wanting to know that it's going to end in a way that will make you happy. That will be what you want it to be. That will be everything you're hoping. Or is it going to fall short? Is it not going to be what you're hoping? Is it going to be good but not great? Is it going to be successful but not hugely successful? You know, whatever it may be for you. You want, you're wanting to know, they just said, you're wanting to know if, the juice is worth the squeeze. Because it's almost like for some of you, you're putting your life on the line to achieve a goal or to live your life in a certain way, to move in a certain direction. There's something you're heading toward in your life. You know this. If this is your reading, you know this. And that will be more concrete in your own head, of course, because you're all different. But there's still this... Uh, frustrating need to know that it's going to be what you want it to be in the end and that it's not going to fall short and that you're not going to have wasted all of this time and effort and life force on something that isn't going to be what you are imagining in the end. Interesting. Okay. Well, hopefully that resonates. If it doesn't, pop over to one of the other readings. Maybe one of the other ones makes more sense to you. If you're not sure, I would say listen in. Because if you're drawn to a reading, there's usually something there for you. Some message. Even if every single message isn't for you, there will be something in here that you need to hear. I, I do definitely believe that. But you have to trust your own instincts. So hopefully you're sticking with me here now. And we're going to find out more about... Um, what it is you're not seeing here and why, possibly. Okay. All right. First card is the Knight of Cups in reverse.
Again, they're giving me, you know what you want. You just, there's this, you're just afraid it's not going to be as, as good as you think it's going to be or good as you hope it's going to be. Just a little fear. Happens to all of us. But it feels like it is really bothering you or at least really bothers you sometimes. Then we have the Queen of Swords in reverse. And, <laughs> sorry, I just keep interrupting the shuffle because I keep getting these messages for you, but um, they're giving me that you have a lot of trust in the universe or God or whatever you call it. You have this trust. Keep moving forward with kind of what your gut is telling you. But it's like the, the universe is just being mum. Like they've zipped their lips <laughs> and no one is telling you. You know, your, your intuition's not telling you. Maybe you go, you know, you watch readings like this or you go to psychics or ask friends or, you know, you just look within for answers on, yeah, but. <laughs> is, this still the, is this still the right thing? Is it going to turn out the way I want it to? And you're just not getting the answer to it. You're just not getting it. You're not getting that answer. Okay. And we have the moon. And one more card for y'all. And finally, the Ten of Wands. Okay, give me just a sec. I just want to take these cards in. I'm going to listen for any initial messages for you, aside from the ones I've already given you. <laughs> um, and then we'll go card by card and we'll see what's going on here, okay? So bear with me just a sec, y'all, while I listen. The first thing they're saying is that you do have to believe. You don't have to. But Spirit is saying, believe. Okay, believe that it's going to work out in the best possible way, no matter what. That's not to say it will turn out exactly the way you're imagining. Probably won't. Might. There are some questions that do get, go, continue to be unanswerable or are not meant to be known. They're saying it sort of takes the fun out of it for you. And you may think, well, it's not fun to not know. I really want to know, you know. But when the beautiful things in your life show up, they feel so amazing and wonderful because you didn't already know about them. You didn't necessarily have it on the calendar, on this date, this wonderful thing is going to happen and it's going to feel great. And then that day comes and, you know, it's sort of like for those of you, <laughs> oh, you all might disagree with me, those of you who have um, gotten married and had a, had a you know beautiful wedding, especially for the brides out there, you put all this time and effort and you say, on this day, it's going to be the most magical day of my life. And the day comes and goes and you, oh, you know, there's like a little bit of a letdown. Not because it wasn't wonderful, but because you spent so long putting all your energy into something with a certain idea of how it was going to turn out and whether it turned out the way you wanted or it didn't, it's like you saw it coming. You knew it was there and the day just sort of comes and goes and then you're left with this feeling of, okay, what now? But if there are some surprises in life, right? 
there are things that come along that you are not expecting or anticipating or have circled on the calendar. You just are filled with joy when they show up. And you're filled with joy after they show up. And you look back on it and go, wow, that was great. So it's not to put down the things that we plan for and get excited about at all. It's just a different experience in life. Just a different experience. And so there are some things you're not meant to know about ahead of time. Because that is part of the fun of living. Is enjoying the surprise moments, the, the, the tilt towards success you weren't expecting, the love of your life showing up when you weren't looking for them, you know. The, the pregnancy you weren't expecting, but you're overjoyed about, you know, those things are what spark joy in our lives for a long, long time because we can look back on them and remember how beautiful that moment was, how exciting it was. Along with the other moments we do plan, birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, graduations, those are all wonderful moments too, but, you know, uh, you're just giving me that having both makes your life more full. So accept that on some level, that there are some things you're just not meant to know, but it will work out. Maybe not in the exact way you're imagining or in the exact time frame you're hoping for, but it will work out in the best possible way for you and for your life and for whatever it is you're working toward. And you may not even know how that should look at this point, but your spirit team does. They have ideas about what you really need, what will really make you happy, what will really have you feeling fulfilled. But if you're feeling this gut instinct to follow a certain path in your life, Whatever that may be, trust it, believe in it. Even if you've got that little fear inside going, yeah, but is the juice going to be worth the squeeze? I'm putting my life on the line here for this in some way. In some way, you're doing things differently than other people. You're following a different path. You are pursuing a different dream. You are doing something different than typical. I am getting that for most of you anyway. And you just want to know that all the effort you're putting in isn't just going to fall flat. It's not. When your gut gets involved, when your intuition gets involved, when your soul gets involved in a situation, the best thing you can do is trust it. Because it won't lead you astray. It won't lead you down the wrong path. It will not. No matter how it looks at the onset or along the way, you know, there are, there are hills and valleys in every path. But if you're following your intuition, if you're following your own spirit in some way, in some situation of your life, the best thing you can do is believe that it's the right thing and that you will not be disappointed. Okay? That's the initial message they wanted to give you. All right, but let's jump into the cards and see what else I have for you. So your first card is the Knight of Cups Reverse. And again, they're giving me this message of there's this worry that you're going to be unhappy, that you're going to be disappointed, that you're going to be kind of let down. It's you're, you're hoping, you know, you're reaching for the stars. You're a little afraid you won't get past the clouds, right? Try not to be pre-disappointed in an outcome you haven't experienced yet, okay? Allow yourself to continue to dream, to reach for the stars. You don't know where it's going to take you. I know that. You're maybe not meant to. But trust that when it does play out, when things do start to unfold, 
you're not going to be sad about it. <laughs> you're not going to be disappointed. No matter how it works out. Because it's going to work out in a way that when it does happen, will make you really, really happy. Okay? Who you are today may not be who you are when things finally kind of manifest for you. All right, so your next card is the Queen of Swords reversed. Hold on one sec, I just want to listen. Okay, the first thing they're saying is that the Spirit's not going to tell you this is how it's going to look. You know, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, <laughs> you know, give you the full picture, the rundown, the movie trailer of how this is going to end up for you. Whether it's a relationship, a career path, maybe it's just the way you live your life in some way. There is no um, movie trailer that's going to give you a sneak peek at the ending. You're not going to find that here. You're not going to find it anywhere because you're not meant to. You're meant to imagine that it will be so incredible, that it will make you so happy, that it will be everything you've ever wanted in some way. And when it does play out, in some way it will be. Might not be exactly the way you think today. The way you think today won't be the way you think then. You just have to kind of trust it might be something even bigger and better than you are giving yourself credit for right now. But it won't be disappointing. All right. Your next card is the moon. There's a little bit of fear here. Absolutely. And I think you know that. And I know this reading is about what you don't know, what you're not seeing. So let me see what else they want to say about the moon. One sec, y'all. They're telling you the moon is just a moment in time. It's just a moment in time, right? The moment of darkness can sometimes be scary at night, sometimes can be beautiful, sometimes can be eerie. But the sun always comes out. It's a temporary moment in time. Don't let your frustrations your need to know, your worry about the future, kind of grab hold of you and keep you in the, in the dark of night. You know, keep you in that place of being afraid of the dark in some way, being afraid of the unknown. The sun is going to come out. Things are going to become clearer for you, day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. Things will become more and more clear for you. And as things get even more clear and start to manifest and unfold for you, there'll be new things that will be budding and coming up that you don't know. That you're not supposed to know. It happens all over again. Have fun with it. Play with it. They're saying, allow yourself to explore the darkness a little bit. <clears throat> Meaning, <clears throat> just trying to listen to what they're saying, because I don't quite know if I quite understand what they mean by that. Hold on one they're saying the darkness is full of shadows. Full of surprises we didn't see in the daytime. Full of hidden treasures. Hidden, hidden little dark spots that we don't know what's inside, you know. Now, granted, when the sun comes out, those shadows disappear, like they were never there. And we have more clarity. We can see what's real, what's not real. But they are encouraging you to play with the darkness a little bit. Dig around. Find out what's there. Maybe there's some good things in the unknown. Maybe there's some things you haven't imagined for yourself yet, and you need to dream a little bit more. You need to play with it. Be creative. Let your mind wander and consider scenarios that you haven't even dreamt of yet. Try to ignore the ones that tell you it's always going to be dark. You're never 
going to have the clarity you need. That things might be terrible. There might be a disaster. It's all for nothing. That's just fear. But the darkness can bring out some hidden treasures, right? And it can help you dream a little bit. You know, it's like when we go to bed and we go to sleep and I don't know about you, but I know I have the most fantastical, crazy, I can't even imagine where they come from kind of dreams that show up in my brain at night. Always have. And it surprises me when I wake up and I think, well, how did I dream of that? <laughs> but you don't have to be asleep to play in the dark. Allow yourself to be childlike when it comes to your dreams and your aspirations. And, you know, children, they just believe everything's going to work out, but they do let themselves get very creative with how they think it's going to go. And so can you. Why not have fun with it instead of getting frustrated with it? You're going to find out that you were on the right path all along. That much I can tell you. You're not going to be disappointed. That much I can tell you. And, and how can I tell you that when I don't know what you're working toward? I don't know what path you're on because you're following your own intuition and you're following your spirit. And you're doing it because you have this inner knowing in you that's telling you, just keep going, just keep going a little bit further. I know you can't tell what it's going to look like yet. I know you haven't seen the results of your efforts yet. Trust. And you're doing it. And it's going to be good. Your higher self, your spirit, would not lead you down a path just to fall off the edge of a cliff. <laughs> that's the truth. And spirit wants you to know that. All right. So your final card here is the Ten of Wands. One second. They're giving me this Ten of Wands. They're giving me the image of a harvest, of gathering up all of the things you've been working on, right, just like a farmer. Gathering up the harvest, pulling it all together, just like these Ten of Wands here. And then moving on to the next harvest, right? How, you know, planting the seeds, starting all over again. That's how life goes. But what they're showing me here is that you've planted the seeds. You're tending to the harvest. You're doing the work. There's no reason to believe that your harvest will be anything but fruitful and beneficial and abundant. Because it will be. And that's really what Spirit wants you to know about this situation that you're not seeing. Yes, you're not seeing how it's going to end and you're not going to get that answer here other than the big thing here that you're not seeing is that you know you're following your intuition. You know you're following your own spirit's guidance. What you're not seeing is, and you're not accepting is that your own spirit, your own higher self would not let you down, will not let you down, has never let you down. When do things disappoint us? Usually when our ego gets involved. Doesn't mean there aren't maybe sometimes disappointments along the way. Again, we've got hills and valleys all through our lives, ups and downs. But if you can look back at the situations when in your life, when you have followed your own inner truth, your own inner guidance, has it ever really let you down? Or did it lead you right where you needed to go to get to the next stage. That's what you're doing now. You're just being asked to trust that. All right, group three. I know that was a little bit of a woo-woo reading, but I'm guessing this is a, a lovely little woo-woo group. <laughs> <laughs>
in some way um, in that uh, you know what I'm talking about. So um, I hope the reading resonated. I hope it helped you. I hope it gave you kind of a little inner nudge. If it did resonate, please give it a thumbs up. Helps me know that the reading resonated, that our energies are connecting. We'll also help future readings to resonate for you as well. It resonate a little bit more, you know, the more our energies are connected. And thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you and have a great day, y'all. Bye-bye.